Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Galactic Civilizations 3 Pragmatic Gifted Playthrough. I'm your host, Colors Fade. This is episode 9. We're at turn 106. We still have 25 more turns with the protection that we bought from Negotiator Neutral. No one declare war on us for 50 turns, so we're halfway through that protection trying to crank out as many ships as we can. We're doing a little surveying of the space junk. Still haven't ran into the Drengen because we have not even looked at half the map yet. I do have some concern about where they are, but for the most part I just want to keep doing what I'm doing. I am tempted to explore more of the map because I want to see where I can get more resources where I can get more capsules and things like that. In the meantime, we have this anomaly. We're, we're almost done with all the anomalies, too, that we can see, so I think it's time to start exploring whether we want to run into the other racers or not. Plus 10 hit points to all ships. Yes, that's one of my favorite rewards to get. We will autopilot these guys to the next precursor rally point. It's 30 points away. This guy... I don't want it. Fleet Logistics is done in one turn, so I'm going to have him try to use this capsule on large scale construction. It didn't work. So we go back to Fleet Logistics. And this guy, the Zindelit, has a huge, huge, huge sensor range. So I'm going to send him over here, <coughs> and he can kind of do some exploring and some surveying at the same time. Turn 107 coming up on us. We're going to need about. 30,000 credits to buy harpoons from the the two or three factions that have them now because that's a really expensive tech to research and we're still a ways from researching it and I'd like to have harpoons on a few ships before we have to go to war with the Kryn. Tensions are eased because of the Open Borders Treaty. I'm happy for them about that. So he's going to do some surveying. We have an idle colony. This is Titan. It is now ready for its fusion power plant, but first let's put the deep core mine right there. And then we'll do, before we do the fusion power plant, let's see. Approval says they're ready for a city. So we're going to put the city right there and synergize it with the farm to get a little bonus. Then we're going to put the fusion power plant down right there. And then we're going to do a little bit of habitat improvement. We're going to put a spot right there. And they're ready to go for a while. Alpha Centauri is one turn away from... I'm just going to have him create another longbow. Balder, yeah, I created all these erectors. So, I created more erectors last episode than I'm allowed to create because of administrators. It says minus two because of a glitch with the save dialogue coming up here and not preventing you from touching things on the screen. I was clicking and clicking and clicking and it was making a sound but nothing was showing up. And as it stands, it was making a whole bunch of constructors, but we had to wait for the UI to update. Things needing to be marshaled to the UI. Waiting for the computer's turn. Five foreign ships in my territory. Without open borders treaty, who are those? Oh, well, there's, they're going to be all these little cringe ships, so I'm not worried about that. Research says we're finally done with fleet logistics. Now we're going to want to go off to deep space. But in the meantime, we need to finish planetary invasion because we've got to be ready to make transports for the bozos, as King Julian would say. Got to be ready to fight the bozos. And what are these guys doing? Oh, the Kryn are over here in Iconian space. I wonder if they're... Are they at war with anybody? No. Wow, but they got ships everywhere. All right, Alpha Centauri, what do we got for fleet? Yeah, I got that one extra ship so we can make a fleet of eight, which is great. Um, come up here to the border. Make another fleet right there. 
Who's this over here? There's an agent, and, and now they're running back up in that direction. <coughs> Got little ships everywhere. On the balance of power, our production rank is number two. I want to get a few more star bases around some of my core systems so we can get those production numbers up. Which reminds me, we should take a little, a little look through. Is there anything we can add yet? There's some more stuff we can do to these star bases. So any of these ones that are eco relic our eco star bases. Oh, let's see, this like has ancient study center, ancient study center, ancient Chinese secrets, mining headquarters. All this stuff that I need to add. This takes durantium and money, and we didn't have money earlier. So it's a good thing we're doing this now. I really like the way that star bases work now compared to how they worked so long before Crusades. Constructor spam was a big deal. It wasn't a lot of fun. This is great though. We're going to get all of our star bases updated. That's all of them. All right. Perfect. Wow, we did a lot there. That was cool get all those guys upgraded and that should uh, that should boost our manufacturing considerably what do we have here we have Sinicus 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 or whatever however you pronounce that I'm still I'm not solid on that I want to do that And it, this adds to ship construction, so we're going to want to do that there. We want to create just a big old circle around this boy. And then we'll put a city down here. Give these people a boost. What's their approval rating? Their approval can handle the city right now, so let's not waste any time. Let's get the city built first, then the fusion power plant, and then we can do all the all the terraforming. That would be the optimal order to go in. This planet hasn't been colonized by anybody and it can be colonized by us. <coughs> it has plus 25% to research and plus 10% raw production and plus 10% influence growth. It's absolutely great. Um, but at minus two administrator, I have to create some more administrators to get to that. Uh, Okay, let's do that. We're going to use him at some point in time. We're going to take our last administrator and promote him. Send him off to the Cayman Islands. Uh, I'm going to grab that planet with a specialty ship. A, oh, I have more ships here. More defensive ships. I need a backbone is all I need. You go up here. What do I have that's new? Current Krull is 3.5 and a 3 and a 4.4 for defense. And that guy is better defensively, but he has no offense. Both these guys are basically the same identical ship. One's an escort and one's an assault. Um, I'm going to favor that ship because. Nah, I'm not in favor it. Just keep building these guys. Alright, in the meantime, there's a chance to build another starbase down here. Another production starbase. If you bring that up, you can see how close you can get. Uh oh, that's too, too close. Alright, so I can't quite get to, the, to there. Alright, we're going to just capture those two planets with an economic ring. There we go. Pretty good time there. Planetary invasion. But I want to spend the possibility of a 15% bonus uh, on large scale construction, which we didn't get. But planetary invasion is almost there, which is great. 
this guy doesn't have any the prospector doesn't have anything there but I know there's some way back here yep there these things respawn over time so it always pays to keep keep your ships kind of making a big circle or clearing out an area cycling back around plus 10 of the range of all ships awesome we can delete that point we can flip over again to large scale construction because they have a survey ship didn't get it got a little experience points for all those guys but what they can do is autopilot to the last precursor anomaly that we have tagged hopefully we'll find some more this is yep resource right there I need that Durantium and that Ascension Crystal. Well, no, our Starbase is already getting it, so we just need that Durantium, which nobody's grabbing, amazingly. <coughs> amazingly. Production, we're now number one, so upgrading all those Starbases put our production at number one. Our balance of power, we're way over here. We still have, let me see one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh. Plus 100 influence for 15 turns. That's going to be awesome. The Kryn have finally issued a war against somebody, and they're going to war against the Torians. I'm going to take 2 billion people off there, and there they are, the Drenjin. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We're missing one race. One faction. We got planetary invasion. We're ready to go. Um, I want to get Stellar Forge ready. It only takes two turns to research it. But we have found him. So that, yeah, and there they are. And I kind of suspected that they were down here, but they're way up here. That's interesting. So let's just keep him prospecting. I like to manually move my ships, but this guy... I'll tell you what I'm going to do with him. I'm going to have him survey on his own, and with his giant sensor range, he should start clearing some stuff off. Sometimes they can find things way better by themselves than they can with you. Um, this planet, approval-wise, says it's ready for a city. Melody. So I'm going to make them a city and it's going to go right there. They got a lot of food, which is great. Uh, they got an imp import export center. Haven't we built that somewhere yet? I guess not. The diplomatic core adds to influence growth. One per galaxy. I need a snuggler to build it. Do I have any snuggler colonies? Anywhere. Right there buy that out of the market come back to Melody and say I'm going to put the Diplomatic Corps right here because this tile has a nice bonus in it plus four this adds to resistance and Melody's on the front line so that's that's good that makes a lot of sense and then a fusion power plant here and then we can build a nice little manufacturing wheel around it terraforming plant right there Habitat improvement right there. We're going to have a nice manufacturing wheel for that planet. So Melody, a frontline planet we probably don't want to lose. We're going to want to keep an eye on that. Um, this planet, approval-wise, says you can also handle a city, but it's Coolia 3. I'm not as concerned because it doesn't really have a wheel yet. So before we start worrying about manufacturing things, I want to put that there, and I want to start actually creating a wheel for it. save that for some probably right there let's do a bunch of terraforming and then that planet will be worth something same thing here do that and I'm out of antimatter I've used up all my antimatter so it's dirt cheap so I'm going to buy a bunch of it and I'm going to say make your fusion power plant right there and then this is a great spot for a stellar forge which you guys will see in a little bit. Let's go colonize this planet. Oh, he's got 28 turns. He can do it in one turn. It's awesome. 
Kalmar, 2. Choosing only the pragmatic choices, it's plus 10 pragmatic, minus 10 to population growth, plus 10 to economy, and plus 10 to manufacturing. He's also plus 25 research. So we're going to do this. Tag him with an R so we know he's for research focused. And this is great because there's a research node right there. And there's going to be an opportunity to make a big research wheel over there and maybe another one over here. So we're just going to do research right out of the gate. Um, what's its approval? Its approval already says I can handle a city. <laughs> so since it can handle a city right now we're going to do a little research and then a little city let's do some more research right there and then let's look at where we want to terraform planetary soil upgrade we can make the, a, not, a decent wheel over here so this is what I'm going to do is a wheel over in this direction a big nice fat research wheel be a nice center for that one. Oh yeah, that's going to be great. Alright. These guys just hit Q and let them patrol right there. Sit on the border of the Kryn. Military rank we're number one. But we got to get some transports ready to go. We're at turn 110 so we're 21 turns away from what I feel is inevitable war. As soon as our protection drops Kind of like Harry Potter turning 17. They're going to come after us. We're at 98% on approval. Though. We're getting some really nice bonuses because of all of that. Which is great. We're going to have a lot of ships ready to go. And I think what this game shows, especially this playthrough, is just how much a good start makes a difference. We got started in a really good spot with really... F not a lot of people around us, a whole bunch of planets in a giant section of the map and, and no real threats to colonize at all. Since the cat is out of the bag, insist that the commander get a fair price for sharing knowledge. We're going to take pragmatic 25 credits plus 2500 and 100% ship range to everyone's ships. We have to choose pragmatic no matter what in this playthrough. That gives us another ideology point though and so we're going to choose this diplomatic bonus plus one. We're going to go all the way down this line. Um, I like this. I'm going to do that. Because there are other choices up here, engineers. Um, anyone at war with us receives a 25% penalty to approval. I just don't think that's a big enough negative. They're still going to declare war. I would rather use this and keep all the other races happy with us. So let's do that. We're going to get a new citizen. And I said last time that we need a general and a commander. So let's grab the general now and we'll grab the commander later. And then we'll be at war. We also need to build... Um, there is a structure we need to build. And I want to build it at a planet that's more isolated way back here like this one. Uh, except that doesn't have a lot of space. This one does. The strategic command gives you a general. And it doesn't have any adjacency bonuses. So you always want to stick it on the tile by itself. So this is a perfect planet to do it on. We need some Heliosaur to do it though. So I'm going to go buy a Heliosaur from the market and I'm going to come down here and we're going to build the strategic command and we're not even going to waste any time we're going to put it all the way up it only takes five turns he wants to give us a whole bunch of stuff and none of it is any good and he wants all my Epimetheus palm and all my money dude no <laughs> it's not happening here's what I'll give you interstellar governance and you give me something that I really want like mass manipulation how about credits see I'm willing to spend 3,000 credits maybe I bet it I'll barely do it for like 3,100 oh yeah less than that 3,000 even plus interstellar governance and he'll give me mass manipulation yeah I'll take that no anybody else open borders for the dredge and I'm just gonna do that oh and I'm gonna see if I can give him diplomacy interstellar governance galactic governance and xeno entertainment and see if I can get Durantium composite from him I can ooh I can get sensor miniaturization from him ooh, ooh, ooh. um get an ion optimization from him 
What else is he? Oh, he's got xanthium deposits. I need these for the Stellar Forge. I'm going to take all of his xanthium deposits. Yep. That works for me. This guy has harpoons. There's nothing I want to give him, and we don't have enough money. We know we need about 30 grand to get harpoons, so. Stellar Forge is almost done. Go to large scale construction. Let's see if we can get it. Oh, 15% moved along nicely there. Another 15%. This never happens to me. Never, ever, ever. That's really nice. One turn, and we're going to get the Stellar Forge. There's another one way up here. Prospector. So turn. These guys are here. They're going to get the last precursor anomaly that we know about. Plus one morale to all colonies. Man, I've got some good bonuses today. It's been well worth it. How far can those guys go? They can go quite a ways. I'm going to have them come down in this corner and just, they're basically looking for any of those precursor anomalies. Do the, are there any up here in Crin space? see any. This one thing I do like is you can scroll around and look at the map while the computer is taking its turn. I like that because I want to see if there's anything that I haven't found yet. Alright, research. Stellar Forge is ready. That is so excellent. Um, we need hull strengthening next so we can get self-healing hulls. This place up here is ready for a deep core mine right there. And a fusion power plant in the center. This also adds to wealth, so I'm just going to put a little market center there. Um, this would be a... Natalia 3, where is that located? This would be a good planet to put the import-export center on because it will synergize nicely with our port of call. And then we can put the fusion power plant right there. Ooh, let's see. Do that. Terraforming. Astartes has. Oh, yeah, eject that. So, command to see when I can make a star base with him. Right there, that's how close he can be. Awesome, and he can get all three of those planets. So, make a second economic ring and really power through. Astartes, just keep making... Oh, and I can make transports now. It's going to be great. Um, transports need to be made on... Well, you need legions, so it doesn't matter. Population doesn't matter anymore. It used to be that you needed population, so you wanted to put... You wanted to have a shipyard between two or three planets that were close enough together they could all provide people to the shipyard to send on the transport. But now you just need legions, so it doesn't really matter. Um, we're going to want to build our transports up here at Melody. We have 15 available legions, so we should build three conveyors and have those ready to go. And this guy, okay, I'm going to check now all these. There's an eco relic down here, or no, I said economy, that one can go away, this has been got, so I can get rid of it, get two antimatter, I got a long time ago, so I can delete that, this get, and get me, that one's been got, he wants to give me harpoons, he wants armor, spice, eight of them, efficient administrator, storage maximization, I just, oh, he wants too much, no, it's not going to happen. Keep keep trying, though. Um, so this ship. I have one good get left. This All I got left is this Durantium right here, but I'm going to send it there. Yeah, command, autopilot to there. And then I also want to get... Um, I 
I want to get that ascension crystal and I want to get that Anaheim Manor and then that's it as far as resources in our area uh, these guys I want you to comb the edge because the edge the edge often means interesting stuff so go look for it you're there whole strengthening don't need you for that I need you on large-scale construction man if we could get large-scale construction before the snathy I mean before the uh, Kryn declare war on us that'd be fabulous get some large holes that'd be awesome what about that one up there well that crystal's not being grabbed either but somebody he's got a oh that's a survey ship oh and we put that marker right there okay oh yeah ascension and thulium I'm gonna rename this ascension Let's we can grab that with the size of our star bases. We can actually get that. Here comes his colony ship, the squatter, coming in here for what I'm sure is Aurelia Deo. And isn't he going to be surprised when that doesn't happen? <laughs> I'm going to love that. Wish I could see the look on the Kryn's face when, when that culture flips. Pirates. I haven't seen a single pirate on this map yet. Well, no, one, we saw one early in the game. They had the, the big pirate ship, and that was it. Uh, you go over here. Trade off for atmospheric cleansing for... I don't need it. Uh, what else are you going to find, little prospector dude? Come up here. Come up to Crin Space and be unfriendly. Oh look, they've got a squatter there, and they've got another one headed up this way, which I wonder if it isn't headed toward the one we colonized not too long ago. That's funny. They're like, hey, we're going to come over here and get this planet. You guys aren't doing anything with it. We're going to come get it. <laughs> right. Keep trying. Oh, and there's Promethean down here. Okay. We're going to want to get that. Get Prom. Research hull strengthening we got. So now we've got that, which is great. It takes a while to go through carriers to get the hull repair systems. Large scale construction and deep space logistics are like the two really crucial things next also um, oh, war field focus because we had we bought stellar folding what is it? miniaturization is four turns what about weapons we have all these optimizations we need to do um, let's go for missile optimization miniaturization only takes three turns let's get as much stuff as we can before wartime happens this adds to wealth. So I think I'd still like to build a wheel over here. And I think we can do some of that. We may have to build a wheel up here. We may have to move the starport up here. Yeah. I think that's what's going to have to happen. In the meantime, we've got some wealth stuff that we can do on this planet as well. Um, yeah, I like that. Let's do this. Let's do that. Because who doesn't like more money? Stellar Forge is going to go down on this planet, but we need a fusion power plant first. I'm going to build that right there. This is going to turn out nicely. You're going to put the Stellar Forge right there. And then you're going to put Pragmatic Ideology Center right there. And you're going to get a really nice bonus to the Stellar Forge. You command autopilot to get the antimatter. We need that more. Turn 115. All right. 
video's 30 minutes in length. We're at turn 114. I'm going to save the game. We're going to call this the end of episode 9. Folks, thanks for sticking with me on this one. This has been entertaining. I've never played through choosing only the pragmatic choices. Um, it certainly seems viable to me, especially on gifted AI setting. We're doing really well. Turn 114. Next episode, we'll see if we can't inch a little closer to... Uh, Turn 131 is when our protection from negotiator neutral wears off. We bought it at turn 81. So we still got quite a while to go. We got a good chance to get large hulls and get some really nice fleets in, and we can go squash the Kryn as soon as that protection comes off. Anyways, if you like the content, subscribe to the channel. If you leave a comment, I'll do my best to answer. I appreciate you guys watching. I will see you next time on Let's Play.